when we construct two sample estimates for averages, we're either estimating the difference between mu1 minus mu2, so the first population mean minus the second, or m1 minus m2, the first population me median minus the second population median. So for these estimates, we still begin with a point estimate, which is either going to be x1 bar minus x2 bar, so meaning our point estimate is the difference between our two sample means, or our point estimate is going to be the difference between our two sample medians, so m1 bar minus m2 bar. And then we add and subtract some margin of error. So that means our confidence interval, interval will be formed by taking x1 bar minus x2 bar plus or minus some margin of error to get the lower and upper bounds, meaning the difference between our sample, sample means is going to be the center of that interval. Or we're taking m1 bar minus m2 bar, adding and subtracting that margin of error. So again, the center of our interval will be the difference of those sample medians. So whenever possible, we want to estimate mu1 minus mu2 because our population mean is always the more desirable measure of center since it takes all of our data into account. But in order to estimate that, we need to verify that some conditions are met. So our populations must be random and independent. I'm sorry, not our populations, our samples. And that has to apply to both sample sets of data, both the first sample and the second sample. Both, both samples must come from normally distributed populations or have a sample size of 25 or larger. So if both of our samples meet these conditions, then we can estimate mu1 minus mu2. If either of our samples fails these conditions, then we have to estimate m1 minus m2. So the difference of our population means if, this, if the conditions are met, and the difference of our uh, population medians if the conditions aren't met. And similar to one sample estimates, we'll assume the first condition is met. So it'll be up to us to verify condition two. So we'll be checking sample sizes as our first resort. And then if we have too small of a sample size, we'll look at using QQ plots to assess normality.